Hey everybody, this is the Alex Manassa. So, <laughs> I, I shot a bunch of footage over this weekend, and uh, I didn't know that editing footage was going to take forever. So, that's going to happen. That's going to take forever. It's just going to take forever. I, and I'm, I'm just explaining like the basics of electricity. It's like a 30-minute lecture, and it's taken me three full days of like every minute I have. So we got to find new streamlined versions of, you know, ways to shoot footage. It's just not efficient that way. We're going to do things a little differently. So I just, I'm just going to do what video game streamers do, honestly. So uh, right on my desktop, you see I have a software called KeyCAD. And today I'm going to show you how to use KeyCAD to just make a circuit board. We're going to make a really, really basic circuit board, but it's going to be a circuit board, right? You never thought you were going to learn how to make a circuit board today, were you? Yeah? Ah, all right. That's right. I'm taking on this magical carpet ride of, uh, of electronics, okay? Now, I'm not going to be teaching you what the electronics do. I'm not going to be teaching you how they work. I'm just showing you KeyCAD and how it works, right? So all I did is I installed this software called KeyCAD. That's K-I-C-A-D. Uh, you can get the version for Windows. There's Linux. There's Mac. It's one of those open source uh, softwares. I used to use it maybe like five years ago, but it's come a long way. Uh, it's still a little clunky to use. Uh, but you can get used to it. You, I mean, you're you're gonna you want to be an engineer, right? You're gonna have to get used to bad software. That's just that's <laughs> just the truth. Uh, when you start a new project, I called mine Sandbox underscore New. Sandbox, as in a place that you play where you can just sort of make things and destroy things. I always have a sandbox project because I always want to try something new. Uh, we got a PCB up here, and we've got a schematic, right? The PCB is called artwork. That's actually the layout. That's the literal layout of what the circuit board is going to be. Before you do that, you have to define what parts are going to be on your board. <clears throat> I know I, I did a lot. I did a singing lesson the other day, so my voice is shot. We are bored. Uh, you got you got to define what parts are on your board, and you have to define how those parts are connected. Right? That's all a schematic is for. Right? Parts and how they're connected. A schematic is entirely symbolic. So here, when you open your schematic. Uh, you can use the middle uh, mouse wheel here to zoom in and you're going to zoom into wherever your cursor is So if I put my cursor over to the left, I'm going to zoom into the left If I put my cursor to the right, zoom into the right If I ever, if you have trouble finding yourself, just zoom out a bunch Put your mouse where you want to go, just zoom in a bunch there Okay. You can also uh, middle click and you can do a little pan right there uh, You got your title block, here's the title block, sandbox underscore new schematic Title, haven't given one. Size, A4, that's European. This is very European software, by the way. You're going to find that out. And that's it. It doesn't matter. Oh, let me zoom out in the middle. And we are going to place our first part. Exciting, right? We're going to place a resistor. To place a resistor, go up to the toolbar here, place, and then symbol. Notice it's also Shift A. So from anywhere in this uh, uh, sheet, I can do Shift A. Same thing, right? So Shift A or go to place and then part. Click anywhere, or click wherever you want to put the part. I'm just going to put it there. Now, for you, it's going to have a library that loads for a long time. I already did that. It needs to ha that needs to happen once. KeyCAD is actually reaching out the internet and the databases. I think the database is on the internet. I think it's just a GitHub, uh, and actually grabbing a lot of parts. Okay, it's because all of these uh, trees items are libraries, right? <clears throat> And this is the part where circuit board making is hard, but good news, it's really the only part other than DRC checks. You're going to find out about that joy later. Uh, you can you can filter, you can type stuff in here, right? And I, and I actually suggest that. Just one day when you, got, when you got a minute, just look through these libraries. Like sit there, put a podcast on, listen to music, and just look at all of these. Like look at all of this stuff. There's a lot of stuff. But it's Swiss cheese, right? There's a lot of missing parts too. You, you don't know what, it's like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're gonna get, except some of the chocolates are just missing. Probably because Forrest Gump gave them to you and he was eating a bunch while he was talking to that nice lady um, about Lieutenant Dan. Um, okay, so all your generic parts that are like, oh, this is your, your usual electronics pieces, those are in the device library. So scroll down to device library, click on the little plus sign to expand it, boom. And you've got all of these parts that you'll notice there's battery cell and stuff like that now these are just I right, remember these symbols don't mean anything except for they represent a physical part right and the connections to that part that's it so if I put a if I put a capacitor here it doesn't matter if it's a capacitor or this buzzer it's got two p it's got two ports here the little circles there 
show uh, what can connect to it. Let me let me make this bigger. There you go. You don't have the eye strain. Uh, these little circles here show uh, connection ports. There's two of them on this buzzer. There's two of them on this capacitor. It wouldn't matter, right? The reason why we pick the right symbol for the right job is for human readability, is so people can actually understand it. Uh, humans are important, uh, I think. Most of them are. I'd say, in fact, almost all of them are. I'd say only a fair minority of humans are not important. I think that all life is precious. Okay, so if you go to just, just regular R, you're gonna see resistor. It's this box type resistor. I told you before, this is a very European software. Um, so in addition to uh, having European units as a primary unit, it also has uh, European symbols. And the European symbol for a, a resistor is a box. But in the United States, we do squiggly line. We do a little zigzag right there. So we're in America, probably, maybe. I don't know. We're not British. Uh, that's, that's more chance of that, right? So I just picked the uh, RUS, right? And I just plopped it. I'm gonna hit the escape key because right now you're still in placement mode and you're gonna continue placing things. So I hit the escape key. I'm gonna zoom in on this, right? And if you hover over the letters on RUS, let's take a look at this. This R question mark, that's called a reference designator. That's this resistor's name, okay? Anytime this resistor is referred to, it's gonna be referred to by that name. Now, there's also a value on the resistor. Right? that the value is how much resistance the resistor has. Okay, so we're gonna change this over to 1K. 1K, okay, so now it's 1K. And you can see a couple of other options here. You can make it bold, make it italic, doesn't matter. Okay, 1K, boom, bada bing, bada boom. It's now a 1K resistor. We got this R here, it's R question mark. It's waiting for a name. When you, when you double click on the R question mark, it opens up edit reference field. The name of a resistor or the name of any component, it's called its reference designator, okay? Let's just name it R1 because it is the first R. Okay, cool. That looks like a resistor to me. Uh, let's go ahead and start placing some more parts. So I'm gonna go to place, symbol, pop up here. The next thing I wanna place is a connector. So I'm gonna go down to the connector library. That is down here. Now there's like a bunch of connector libraries. And this is the part where I said Swiss cheese. Uh, it is also like, <laughs> It is also like really excessive. See all these connectors. There's just so many connectors, just so many connectors, so many. If you want an audio jack, you'd have one right here. Easy peasy. Okay, barrel mounts. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So the, I didn't say what kind of connector I wanted. <clears throat> Remember, these are symbols. Down here, you can see if it has a footprint assigned. You notice that a lot of these don't. Uh, this one has a data sheet. This is a microchip part. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so there's no footprint assigned to any of these, okay? We're gonna see some parts that do have some footprints assigned. I'll show you some later. Uh-huh, where was I? Okay. So, actually I'm gonna put connector female. I just want a one pinned part, really. It doesn't matter if it was a connector or not. So what is this is gonna be? Actually, let me, uh, 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 okay. I'm just gonna draw you what I wanna make. All right, so the circuit board that I wanna make it's gonna look like this, right? So it's got its green. We're gonna fill it in with green, right? Okay, okay, green. And I'm gonna grab my paint tool here. Boom, it's green. So that's my green circuit board. I just want to put a connector here that you solder into. So there's the there's the copper there. We're gonna solder into that connector. Uh, we're gonna to go to another connector on here. Here we go. Okay, uh, it is going to say nine, oh, nine volt. Let's make it bold. Go bold, go bold. All right, nine volt. Okay, down here I want GND ground. Okay, so I'm gonna connect a nine volt battery here and the ground of that battery is gonna go here or the negative terminal, really. Uh, from there I want, and I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use orange for copper, why not? Use this line. I'm gonna have an orange piece of copper come over here. Okay, orange piece of copper is gonna come over here. It's gonna run into a little footprint. Okay, so we're gonna solder a resistor there. There's the resistor. Oop. Oh. All right, close enough. Whatever. I'll roll with it. Okay, once we've got that, 
we're going to come over here. We're going to do the exact same thing. And as a matter of fact, I'm just going to make my life a little easier. There we go. There we go. Okay, this one's an LED, but it's going to look the same footprint wise. Okay, boom, there it is. Type LED. All right, and R1, 1K, okay? That's what I want my circuit board to look like. This is What this is gonna do is it's just going to uh, have a nine volt battery soldered into it, and that's gonna go to a one, uh, one kilo ohm resistor, which is then gonna go to an LED, which is then gonna go to the negative terminal of the battery, which is, you know, completing that circuit, it's gonna make this LED turn on, all right? It's not gonna be too fancy. So I need a, so this right here is a one pin connector, that's another one pin connector. I could also use a two pin connector and just have both of these, but I'm gonna use two one pin connectors. You know, it's tomato, tomato, it all works. Okay, I could do male or female. Ah, let's go male. I just don't feel like rotating it. If you wanna rotate stuff, it's control R. Oh wait, I'm sorry, no, it's just R, wrong software. Yeah, so if you wanna rotate stuff, it's just R. Uh, in the words of my mentor, just make it pretty. Make it pretty. Remember, this is all just about having the connections, uh, having the parts and then having the connection between the parts. Okay, so now I've connected that part, all right? So that was uh, this part of the circuit. I just did that. I just did that. I didn't physically lay it out. I made up the symbols that are gonna represent it. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and place our LED. All right, we're gonna plate that, put that, place that right below. Okay. Oh, and notice all the stuff that we've used so far is up and recently used. That's really, really handy. So keep that in mind. All right. Down to device. Gonna find an LED. I don't want a shot key. This is a, a confession time. I actually never really internalized the alphabet, so I have to recite it every time. It's it's a sad it's a sad existence I live. So I'm over there at like the bank or something. They asked me to put stuff in alphabetic order and I'm just like whispering to myself, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, G, K, L, B, Q, B, Q, R, T. Okay, TV comes before you. It's a sad existence. All right, so we've got a connector on here. I want another one. I'm just gonna press C and it just immediately will make a copy. So all I did was mouse over it, hit C. I can do the same thing with the resistor, boom. All right, so I'm grab the connector. I'm just gonna make a copy of it, okay. This looks okay in terms of prettiness. I think old Fibonacci wouldn't you know, complain too much. Uh, remember we gotta rename, I'm gonna pan really quick here. We're just go ahead and rename these things, okay? Uh, reference designators are always just a letter or a very, very short series of letters and then uh, a number, okay? So those are, those are like your address. This is the first diode I have on here. It happens to be a light emitting diode, but as a diode nonetheless, I like the fact that it says LED right there. I'm okay with that. Okay, cool, very cool. I need to change the value of these though because that's supposed to be my nine volt. I'm gonna put a plus nine volt, plus nine volt, cover my bases. You always want your bases covered. Oh, ground. I need to buy a new keyboard. I'm still using the keyboard that is over there, uh, but it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. Okay, cool, wow, we did it. No, we didn't. We have to assign these footprints, okay? So we've put the symbolic stuff here. We've, we've symbolized this whole diagram. Uh, I could do math problems on this. I can communicate this. I can go prototype this. I can go print this sheet out and hand it to a technician or take it with me to the lab myself and make this circuit on a breadboard, right? With whatever components are in the lab. Uh, but we need to uh, assign footprints because when you're soldering something onto a board, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just open up, pardon pardon my tabs. I have so many tabs. Don't judge, don't judge my tabs. Don't tab shame me, okay? Uh, we're going to go over to DigiKey, digi enunciate the syllables. I'm just going to go over to products, and we're just going to look up, um, well, you can buy vacuum tubes from DigiKey. That's pretty, that's pretty retro. Uh, let's just take a look at capacitors. Sure, why not? Ceramic capacitors. What I'm going to show you is what a component looks like. Uh, I'm going to filter on uh, surface mounts, MLCC. I don't care. Yeah, sure, why not? Anything in surface mount. I mean... They'll, they'll all look the part. I just need someone that looks the part to show you. All right, cool. This is what a component's probably gonna look like. 
it's like a little tiny block. If you have an old piece of electronics, if you prefer to break that sucker open and take a look at the circuit board, you're going to see a lot of little parts like this sitting around the circuit board, right? That's what we're doing right now. We're just finding those little parts. And uh, just follow what I'm going to do, right? This is a uh, first, uh, was it you, first you watch, then you, uh, then you do and then you teach. Okay, so if you double click on this right now, it's gonna ask for part for clarification. It wants to know, are you talking about the symbol itself or the pin on the symbol? I want the symbol itself, okay? And once you've done that, you've selected the symbol, right? So I'm gonna hit escape. I double clicked. I clarified my selection. Nothing's happening, right? I know, I told you it's clunky. Just right click and then go to properties now, okay? Boom. So you, you can also edit all the properties from here. I could have edited the value. I could have edited the reference designator there. I want to edit the footprint, okay? So I've grabbed my connector. I want to assign it a footprint that's going to match, right? And as you can see, there's a lot of connectors here. Uh, there's actually, like, there's too many connectors. So many connect. This is the part where this might slow down a little bit because i got to go find the freaking connector. There we go, connector pin. There we go, that looks good. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so I went down to connector pin. By the way, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is one of those things where you might just have to look through every GD part in here to find out what's going on. All right? You just might have to look through everything to find the part you want. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I already know what part I want because I've done this before. So I'm just going to go to connector pin. All right? Um... This is a pin D1, so it's got, actually, I'm not sure what the, oh, D1.0 millimeters. Okay, so D1 millimeter, uh, L length is 10 millimeters. That's probably for the 3D model, so it's going to sit 10 millimeters proud from the board. Um, I think that's kind of unnecessary, but. All right, I'm just going to, i tell you what, I'm going to go over to pin header, connector pin header. I'm going to show you guys how to shop for parts and what all these parts mean. As I said before, you're just following me. So just keep following me. Connector, pin header, one millimeter. I grabbed it. It's this guy. I'm just going to go ahead and assign it now. So I've assigned it. Now remember, we've got two connectors on this board, right? So we're just going to copy this and head down here. Remember, I double, so I double click this. It's asking me, do I want to talk about the pin or do I want to talk about the whole part? I want to talk about the whole part. Now I'm in the context of the whole part. The whole part has been selected now. It doesn't give you any feedback because it's it's open for open source software. I didn't pay any money for it, so I can't complain. And I'm just going to copy that in. Okay. Very good. Wunderbar. Excellent. 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 All right. So those those now have footprints. Let's go ahead and work on this guy. Let's double click on the zigzag. So there's no pin there, right? So it didn't get confused whether if I'm talking about the part or the pin. It knew exactly because there's just a part there. There's no pin. All right, so what I want is a surface mount, so SMT or SMD. Uh-huh, 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 resistor. All right, so this is a resistor SMD, that surface mount device. Pretty sure that's what it stands for. And I'm just going to tell you that an 0805 is pretty good. That's a beginner can solder that. If you're like, if you've got um, the shakes, you know, you drink too much coffee like I do, you can go bigger, like 1206. But that's kind of like, that's kind of huge. That's kind of super huge. All right, so we're going to double click on it. Okay. I, you don't need this again. I, I just instinctively copy pasted it. Um, copied it, not pasted it. Uh, you don't need this again, so you're good there. Let's go ahead and do the uh, LED. LED, footprint, click on this little, I'm sorry, I didn't point this out. I'm clicking on this little library symbol here. A bunch of books stacked up, you know. It's what nerds turn trees into sometimes. They turn them into books. And I'm going to find uh, LED or diode. Here we go. LED SMT. Very nice. Okay. And I'm going to pick another 0805 because I like to be kids consistent. I don't know the difference between castellated his here. I don't know why it says hand solder. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Okay. I'll just pick the 0805. You'll be fine. Probably. It'll look good. It'll look good because we're going to 3D render this. I don't know if you knew that was going to happen. Let's go ahead and save our design. So we've assigned every, all four of these parts uh, a footprint. And we've, so we've put all the parts on the board. We've shown the connections between the parts. And now we've assigned them all footprints. Those are the only three things that you need to go ahead and get a circuit board going. I'm going to go up to this thing that says net, say generate net list. 
Let's make it happen. Sure. Uh, yeah, save it in my project, of course. I mean, thanks for asking, but... I'm going to give you guys a full tour of what this stuff is and what it means as we go, but I'm more of a, a learn-by-doer kind of guy, so we're just going to do that. All right, so what I did was I double-clicked on... or I op opened the uh, Run PCB New, right? So I've got the circuit board open now. This is the circuit board. Okay, uh, so running PCB New, it's totally empty, as you'll notice. Now, what you want to do, sorry, I'm zooming out there, is you can grab Update PCB from the Schematic. Let's see if that works out. Netlist update successful. I like that. If there are errors, they'll be put here, and you're going to have to go fix them in the Schematic before you can bring them into here. Um, uh, sometimes reference designators, if you if you named like, both connectors J1, uh, it would have a problem with that. Okay. So it has put... All right, so it has grabbed all of the parts of my board and put them on my cursor. I'm going to zoom in a bunch. And there you go, you can see them. Okay, let's get to work. All right, this is the part where my I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit rusty, but I've grabbed my LED. I want it down the bottom right. Okay. All right, so I have ground. I'm gonna grab that one. I'm gonna so I'm, I've clicked it. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna say move. While you're moving, you can rotate it. Okay. It's just FYI. So you can use M. Oh, whoops. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. I'll have to call her back. All right. Ah! Select the part, so select the pad. If you accidentally select some text, just unselect it and keep going. Okay, I'm gonna say move. Oh no! Make sure you get out of the mode. I told you it's clunky. It's a real, it's a real clunks fest. Move, okay, jeez. All right, okay, cool. These little things here show you the connections. I'm um, just going to go ahead quickly, just text this person back. Cool. All right. Sorry about that. These are the connections, these little spaghetti wires. It's called a rat's nest. It is really from your nets list. The net list, I'll give you a better tour of, but to uh, make it simple, the net list is just a uh, list of all the parts and which pins on those parts are connected to what. That's it. Oops. Okay. All right, so now we're routing tracks. Okay, sorry. So there's a, a now uh, this shows what's connected to what, but we need to actually connect it, okay? So if you go over here to route tracks, click on the origin of the track Either, either origin is fine. And then just go ahead and start dragging it. All right, cool. I like, I, like, I like those kinds of angles. Those are pretty. You should make your work pretty. First off, it'll make you feel better. Second off, we need a little more prettiness in our lives, I think. All right, congratulations. You just routed this board. Okay, <laughs> that's it. That was all there was. Four parts, three connections, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm going to go over to the, uh, I, will, I forget which, edge cuts. That's the one. Okay, edge cuts. So over here on the right is your layers. You got your coppers, your adhe uh, adhesives, your pastes, your silk screens, your solder masks, uh, all your drawings, your drills, all that stuff. I'm gonna explain all what all that means later. But right now, all you need is edge cuts, okay? Because we're gonna we have to give an edge, define an edge to the circuit board. So what I'm gonna do? Oh, uh, I forget which one of these does it. There's always one thing I forget when I'm teaching a lesson. Let's do this one. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so I grabbed the uh, add graphic polygon. I made sure I was on edge cuts. I selected edge cuts, see that little arrow there? The little blue arrow, the tiny, tiny, minuscule arrow. Uh, I then went over and grabbed just a corner, make sure I've inscribed all these parts. Uh, that should do it, okay? So let's save, because saving is always a good idea. Let's do that. Next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna Go to view and 3D viewer. Let's see. Let's see what kind of job we did. Okay, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Oh, I turned. I left render on. That makes it so slow. Oh, look at that. We've got a part. Look at this. Remember, J1 and J2 are just holes, so you don't actually have to solder that header pin in, uh, but you can if you want to. There's the LED. There's the resistor. I think I can. Yeah, I can pan. Look at me now. I'm panning. You can get your. You get your sweet low angle shots. You can hit the render button if you've got a graphics card and you have a lot of time. 
Look at it rendering. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful render right there. See that? Nice texture going in there. A little brushed quality. Only the finest brushed diodes for me. Okay. Well, uh, oh, so that's, that gets us the 3D render. We got to take this thing home, right? Uh, we got to finish her up. So I'm not going to do a design rules check. You'd normally do that. Uh, what I want to do is I want to file uh, export. Okay, in here somewhere is the exporting the Gerbers. Uh, I think, oh, you know what? They put it under plot. Okay, so when you plot, what you're doing right now is you're making all of the graphics uh, for your Gerber files. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and plot all these now. And it's just going to do it. So all my front copper, back copper, paste, silk screens, masks, all that stuff, okay? So it just generated all those. Well, whoop de doo let's go take a look at them. Because KiCad also comes with a Gerber viewer, right? So, by the way, your tools here, schematic layout editor. So that was a schematic we did. Sometimes you need to edit the symbols on a schematic. Let's say you have a new chip and you want to create it. Uh, you get your PCB uh, layout editor. And in your PCB, those are footprints. Those footprints that we assigned earlier in the schematic phase, uh, you have to make them here. Uh, let's see. Now, here's your Gerbers, okay? So let's see if we can find our Gerbers. Load them up. Load them up, load them up. Open Gerber files, okay? So we've opened up the Gerber viewer. We're opening up the Gerber files. Here's Sandbox New. Let's see if we can make some magic happen, okay? Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. Okay, that's it. So this Gerber, what is a Gerber? A Gerber is a raster file. In other words, it is a vector graphics file. What they do is they just... There's a couple of different pre-made um, shapes, like uh, square, rectangle, oval, circle. And uh, you do is you'll just start drag. You'll say like, okay, the, the square that's the size of D1, or sorry, yeah, is going to be stamped right there, right, is at this position in Cartesian coordinates. And then you're going to trace out, you know, okay, and then you're going to slap down the square tool and drag it over the right. And then to the, so it describes graphically what's going on. This is what's going to go to your circuit board manufacturers. This is all they care about. They don't want your design files. They want your Gerber files. Your Gerber files are, you can actually print them out, carry them with you, be proud of them. I made some circuit boards I've been proud of. I hope you do too. Uh, these are what you make your board from. This is all, this, everything you've done is come to this moment. Okay. And that's it. You made a circuit board. I'm going to go back to the 3D view because it's the most, uh, I think, I think it's the most glorious to end on, and it's just it's just great. Oh, it just looks so good. There we go. You never thought you'd uh, learn how to make a circuit board in one sitting, right? I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I've been the Alex Manassa. Expect to have like more way inside baseball videos. So far, I've just been sitting in front of a camera and ranting in my thinking out loud segments. That's kind of lame. It's it's fun. Sometimes I'm smart. Sometimes I'm witty. I'm not going to give myself that much credit. I need to use the tech here that I'm teaching you as a crutch to keep me going. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah actually you know what before and after <laughs> that's great this is awesome oh no it's got to re-render the death of me so uh keep an eye out i'm going to be doing 3d graphics as well so engineering cad uh, i'll also be doing uh programming for the tiny chips so on this circuit board you can also put a very tiny chip and, and program that tiny chip to do all kinds of things including become a game controller <laughs> you guys want to make a game controller I've made a game controller. I can go drag it out. I've actually played uh, Street Fighter um, on my totally legal emulator. So the emulator's legal. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, we're going to be making way more tech. We're going to have a lot more fun. I think this format works for me. Everything else about the editing and the other video was just so much more complicated. And I'm going to take my own advice from uh, Thinking Out Loud, Episode 10. Simplify your life. Get going. Don't let stuff drag you down. Just get it done. And this is what we're here to do, okay? Engineering Mindset achieved. All right. You guys have a great night. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Oh yeah. And subscribe if you're not a chump. <laughs>